As a current senior, I have mixed emotions on technological advances. Many drive me crazy and make me feel incredibly inept. And yet, there's others that I use and greatly appreciate. In my opinion, one of the wonderful benefits of modern technology is videos that we can we can put together using photographs and music and, and words in a creative way that kind of captures a person's life. Many of us have been to funerals or memorials of those very important to us. And I know you have, you, like I have, kind of go on a journey as you watch this video of the, the, and see this person at various stages in their life. And you see so many things that bring up memories and many smiles and things that touch us deeply. Our remaining assignment on this series is going to touch on this subject. First, I'd like to ask you to think about your own funeral or memorial service. As I have aged and I have been to many funerals, I have thought about my own service uh, a great deal. And personally, what I'd love to be able to do is to create a movement. Uh, I know this is unrealistic, but create a movement such that obituaries and eulogies would be much less about the jobs you held and the accomplishments and the achievements and the awards and much more about how God has used you and the spiritual heritage that you're leaving behind and important to your loved ones and your friends. Again, I know it's not realistic. When, when people remember me and remember my life, I would love for memories to be about how God has used me in ways that have really pleased and honored the Lord and has enabled people to get to know their Heavenly Father much more deeply, much more intimately, learn how to walk with Him more skillfully, and, and develop the ability to truly trust Him and not trust lean on their own understanding. So when you think about your own funeral or your own memorial service, how do you want to be remembered? What could your loved one say about you that would be very meaningful to you? The Lord has used these thoughts and many others and many of these wonderful memorial videos to initiate this thought for me. What if your family uh, What if your family, in the event that we end up having memory issues, which I personally think is going to be most of us, but what if our family chose to make a video for us while we're still alive? And see, this video would be about your life and about your spiritual heritage to your family. The idea the Lord has given me is every family member would appear on the video. Of course, they wouldn't be forced to, but the, ideally every family member would be on the video. They would kind of introduce himself, re, bring up a reminder of who they are to their loved one, and then on the video tell grandma or grandpa or mom or dad or aunt or uncle how much they, they have meant to, to them and what they were able to impart that's going to stick with them. And this could be about spiritual things and, and how they've really enabled them to know the Lord better, but it can also be about other things, because there's a lot of other things other than just knowing the Lord, but, but that is obviously the most important. The idea here is clarity and simplicity. Remember, we're talking about people with memory issues. It's not to be an exhaustive list or very thorough. It's to be very briefly each person reminding their loved one who they are, and this is how you've blessed me. This is what you've imparted to me. And for those in advanced Alzheimer's or, or advanced dementia, just think about Think about starting every day with this video of seeing your loved ones 
and hearing their voices, sharing how meaningful you are to them. Because you see, for most people caught in advanced Alzheimer's, seeing that video may be a brand new experience for them every morning. For most that are in advanced Alzheimer's or dementia, they're no longer able to watch a movie or some of their favorite TV programs because they can't, they can't concentrate, they can't stick with it. So this idea would be a way to kind of reconnect with that very real person that's inside of them and start the day in a very simple way that for a brief time connects and touches that very real person that's in that body that is greatly compromised. Please think about this because what a great blessing that would be. Now, I've had a partner through this whole series. His name is Bob Updegrove. He's my, been my technological partner. He is a, a professional a photographer and videographer, and, uh, and he really loves the Lord and knows him well. And he has been an incredible gift to my wife, Letty, and I in being able to teach us how to do these things and edit these things and directing these things. And Bob and I have been able to work very closely, even though here I am in the middle part of Texas and he's in Virginia. And so now Bob, I'm, I'm asking Bob to take over and he's going to share with you and explain exactly how to do this last assignment. So Bob, take it on. Thank you, buddy. I have spent the past 40 plus years of my life as a professional photographer. I have photographed a bunch of families, probably close to 400 weddings, hundreds of events for companies and organizations, hundreds if not thousands of sporting events. I've always looked at what I do as being like in the memory business, not creating memories, but capturing memories. I have witnessed and documented some of the most important moments in a person's life. I've also, over these years, created and produced hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of slideshows. These shows range from, you know, very simple concepts like taking, you know, some digital images and just having them dissolve one into another and doing it on a computer. Or kind of the other extreme in terms, in terms of complexity is when I used to do uh, back in this is back in the old film days with slide film, I would do these three projector slideshows uh, with music and people talking in them. Over these years, I have seen and witnessed firsthand the power of a single image. And I've also witnessed the power of multiple images. Back in 2016, my 91 year old mother passed away. My two brothers and myself, we knew that that day would eventually come. Uh, and in, particularly in the last two weeks of her life, it was quite evident that that day was rapidly coming. And uh, in that time, we, you know, we didn't talk about plans in terms of what to do at her funeral or what to do at her memorial service. Uh, all that planning and, and talking happened after she passed away. And in that week after she passed away between then and the memorial service, uh, we were frantically uh, trying to make those kind of decisions. Who was going to speak at it? Uh, what music was going to take place? Where, where were we, where we going to even have this thing and, and when? And throughout that whole process, I never thought about putting together a slideshow for my mom, which in hindsight just seems to me kind of strange because of the amount of slideshows that I've done uh, over my career. But in that week, it became evident to me very quickly that I had to put something together. Uh, and so there were a couple very late nights 
of pulling together pictures and some other materials and, and trying to come up with something that we could show at the memorial service. And I ended up with uh, a show that, it, that lasted about eight minutes. Um, I want to show you just a short clip from that slideshow. And the main reason for showing it to you is to give you some context to what the rest of this video will be talking about. So please watch. The older I get, the more I realize that life is short, naturally, <laughs> and that we shouldn't take ourselves so seriously. Check out the view from here, Mom. <laughs> yeah. Now, to get, to get the best picture, you have to stand on top of that. No, no, no. I think we should move along and enjoy life and not let little things bother us all that much. And because there's a lot of good, a lot of fun things, and there's a lot of, like, I, I'm so peaceful and happy for each day. As long as I'm feeling pretty good, that lounge chair and his TV, <laughs> and I'm feeling good, what could be better than that? I have what I need, and I think people are too dissatisfied too much in their life, and they shouldn't be. Because when you compare your what you have and the good things happening to what it could be, it's no contest. So that would be my wish for everybody. <laughs> when I am down and oh my soul so weary. When troubles come and my heart burdened be, then I am... So are you crying yet? Hmm. This next access point is taking advantage of the photos that hopefully you already have in your possession and telling a story. It's about taking advantage of the technology that most likely already exists at, right at your fingertips to record audio and even better video of your family members and doing it in an intentional manner. And by intentional, I mean there's purpose in what you're saying and what other people are, are saying. There's purpose in the questions that might be asked and purpose in the answers to those questions. Now, this is an assignment that will require some planning and some preparation before you can probably actually do the assignment. Uh, let me just say here parenthetically, if at the end of this video you're scratching your head and kind of wondering, uh, okay, I think I understand, but I'm not quite sure where to begin. Uh, if you go to the alzwithchrist.com website, there is a page on that website called Resources. And on that Resources page, there is a link to directions specific to this access point. And in those directions, it'll give you some guidance on how to begin. It'll give you some guidance on kinds of questions to ask. And it'll give some recommendations about technology and trying to get over that hump. Uh, don't let technology be a distraction or something that keeps you from moving along. In fact, if you have an iPhone or something similar, you've got just about everything you need to do this assignment. Now, Buddy mentioned before that this access point involves recording uh, family members, talking about family members or maybe to be more exact, family members talking to family members. Uh, 
from a Christian perspective, much of that conversation will revolve around the Lord. It'll revolve around our relationship with the Lord and other family members and their relationship with the Lord. And so you will probably um, be hopefully talking about the Lord in much of this conversation. And so, you know, there might be some questions like, um, how did my dad's relationship with the Lord affect me? How did it affect my relationship with the Lord? Or from a spousal perspective, it might be, um, what are the attributes of God that I see in my spouse's character? Now, you know, these are deep questions, perhaps uncomfortable questions. Um, hopefully, they'll bring about some deep answers uh, in, in a deeper conversation, uh, which is good and fine. The, the tendency for a lot of us is to keep our conversations pretty superficial. Uh, and this probably might even be more true in our conversations within the family, is that we, we keep it just talking about uh, recipes or the weather or things like that. Um, this assignment will take you a little deeper in those conversations. There's nothing wrong, like Buddy mentioned before, there's, there's absolutely nothing wrong about levity and, and talking about, um, you know, things that you appreciate about someone that aren't necessarily spiritual things. Um, but hopefully there'll be balance between the portions that are, that are kind of light and, and, and fun and then the other aspects that get a little bit more deeper in talking about the Lord. The whole idea, I think, ultimately is, again, to be intentional about it that you're, 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 you're wanting to take this to a point um, and, and, and you want to, whatever it will take to get to that point. Now, let me give you a couple suggestions. And these are, these are ideas. Um, you can, I, I would encourage you to try these, um, definitely. But, um, you know, these are just ideas that, and these, these might trigger some other ideas that you have. Uh, which would be great. But here's, here's something. What if you record yourself giving your eulogy, giving at your memorial service? So picture that. You're at your memorial service, and there you are up front giving the eulogy. What would you say? What do you want people to know about you? What do you want people to remember about you? Okay, I know it might be a little strange, but think about it. I know for myself, and this is kind of along the same line, is I've written down directions for my memorial service, uh, songs that I would like to have sung at it, uh, some people that you know, I would like to have speak at it, uh, things along that line. Now, the important thing with all of this, whether it's you doing your eulogy or other kind of planning for your memorial service, uh, it's probably important to tell at least some family members about it, maybe some friends. Uh, let them know about this, that you have ideas and wishes for your memorial service of what's conveyed, what's done, um, and you can go from there. Here's another idea. If the, if the video recording is going well with family members, you might consider, particularly with older family members, to sit down with them, probably kind of in a question, like an interview kind of a manner, and you're asking them questions about their life, and about fam and family history. And so you get them talking about what their life was like 
when they were growing up? What were they like? Uh, what were, you know, just what was it like gr growing up X amount of years ago? Uh, have them talk about their parents or their grandparents. Have them talk about how they met their spouse and what those first few years of marriage were like. In other words, family history. You know, all, all this kind of information, all these uh, uh, t looking back and remembering things about family members and, and, and just having it recorded, uh, again, hopefully in video form, uh, so you can actually see them and hear, while you're hearing them. Uh, much of this can be very meaningful, I think, for someone who's in the early stages of memory loss. Um, it'll, it, it, they'll enjoy recalling those memories. But I think it's also important uh, for the younger generation uh, that they are able to see and hear from their grandparents or their great-grandparents. Um, and, you know, right now, you know, if they're young, they're probably not all that interested in family history, uh, but as they get older, they, they will become in, interested in it. And what, what could be better than to have video of the characters of their past <laughs> talking about their lives? Buddy mentioned the importance of repetition. These videos that you create are a tool meant to be used over and over again. I think of biblical times and how important oral history was in passing along stories and events. People told these stories over and over. The stories brought comfort. They reminded people who they were and where they came from. In this sense, Repeatedly watching these videos could be valuable for someone in early stages of dementia. For someone who is deeply affected by Alzheimer's or dementia, watching these videos and hearing these stories regrettably probably will not register with them. Although you never know what might trigger a memory with them. In many respects, I think these videos may prove most valuable to those family members left behind. To be able to remember your mother or father when their minds were sharp and fully engaged, and to have those stories recorded in their own voices, preserved for generations to come, so this assignment has lots of applications. You know, as a professional photographer, one of my main objectives is to take really nice pictures. I pay attention to things like, is the photo in focus? Is the exposure correct? Is it composed well? And depending on the event, I might even be looking for something that's artistic. I'm not on social media all that much anymore, but I remember years ago being on Facebook and you know, occasionally you would see a photo posted by somebody. And I would sit there and look at the photo and in my mind I'm thinking, as a photographer, <laughs> I'm thinking, you know, that, that picture is out of focus or it's overexposed or it's not composed very well. Uh, in other words, it's kind of a lousy picture. But if you look at the comments below the picture, inevitably I would read somebody say something along the lines of, uh, every time I see that photo, I want to cry. Or, that is the greatest picture I think I've ever seen. Of course, they're talking about who is in the picture. The quality of the image, not all that important. I say all that to say this. As you approach this assignment, 
don't think you have to be working towards an Academy Award. My advice, keep it simple. If you need help, most likely you have somebody in your family or, or in your network of friends that would be able to help you. If this assignment just seems to be overwhelming, my recommendation is to break it down into pieces. You might start uh, in your family with the people that are most willing to help you uh, and or the people that are maybe the most talkative. Uh, if you start with those people, I think you'll not only be able to, to practice and kind of get used to the process of recording people, but I think you'll also be encouraged by what they're saying. And it might even give you more direction as you move forward. It might even give you a bigger vision of what this is all about. I really believe that this assignment, this, this access point, can be a blessing to you personally and to your family. Again, I would recommend that you look at the resources page for more information. I'd like to close this with some prayer, so let's pray. Lord, we are thankful that you provide all of our needs. I'm thankful, Lord, for your goodness and for your grace. And I pray, Lord, that uh, you would help the people that are listening to this and and wanting to move forward and, and work on this assignment, that you would give them direction, give them clarity, and give them the tools that they need to move forward. And we're thankful, Lord, for who you are and the work that you're about to do in all of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.